Hi everyone, Ian here. So we're going to be looking at a problem that I've seen on a lot of these readme's um, that I've got for common Python packages open. So we've got requests, we've got pillow, we've got scrapey, sphinx, simple JSON. So there's a problem on all these. Um, I say it's a problem, but it's something that a new uh, Python developer wouldn't pick up and a seasoned one would do by default. And um, you probably know what I'm talking about if you are a seasoned Python developer, but basically none of these instructions um, say anything about um, using virtual environments. So virtual environments allow us to isolate our dependencies for projects. And it's something that just isn't done by default as part of um, Python kind of documentation. And it's a problem really deep within Python itself uh, compared, when compared to say something like a Node.js. Um, and it can be a real pain for some things like um, if uh, you are a new Python developer and you start installing packages in this way, um, you potentially get into some real problems. So let me jump over into uh, Visual Studio Code and I can show you what I'm talking about. So I want to do a little bit of a comparison of what things are like installing with pip versus what they are inst like installing with say Node.js, so what they would use in, with JavaScript modules. Um, <clears throat> I'll just show you now by using pip freeze, I don't have anything on there already. I have a nice clean system which is ideally the way you want to keep it. If we go ahead and just in straight away install um, requests, which is a library used for making HTTP requests, a very common one. You can see we've got a whole bunch of things installed there. What we haven't got however is any obvious place where that's been stored. So it's actually just gone into our global um, Python. Uh, and on my system, I'm using uh, PyEnv. So you can see I'm using 3.10.6. And if I grab that and just list out what's in site packages, that's all the everything that I've installed. So if I clear that down again, um, the only way that I can view what I've got installed is by using something called pip freeze and that frees out exactly the um, packages I've got installed at the moment. So we've just installed requests onto a clean system and the only thing we've installed is requests but we've got these additional dependencies. So I'd expect if I was to do pip uninstall requests that I get back to a clean system, right? We've just installed something on top of a clean system, we uninstall something, we get back to a clean system. That's not quite what happens. Um, <laughs> um, first of all, I'm going to freeze these things out into a requirements file, just so we've got them captured. Um, and that gives us, and this is kind of typical behavior, that captures all our um, dependencies as a single file. One other thing that isn't captured here either, we don't have a way of being able to specify anything like development dependencies or anything like that. We cannot um, have different types of dependencies. Um, so let's pip uninstall requests. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so now when I pip freeze, we can see that I've got a whole bunch of stuff still installed. So things that have been installed because they were dependencies of requests, but now when we've taken requests away, we haven't taken its dependencies away, or at least that's what I understand is happening there. Um, so to uninstall them, I need to actually call pip uninstall minus r everything from this. So the r is kind of specifying a requirements file and I can uninstall there and then go through each of the ones that are remaining. And then when I do pip freeze, I get back to an empty system. So there's some complicated things there. So like our packages are captured in a folder that is not in an obvious place. It's on our global system. It's not an easy way of sharing that with anyone else because we have to then remember to write it out to requirements file and be able to share that requirements file with the other person. Um, let's now take a look at um, 
Node.js. And for Node.js, I'm going to use Node Fetch as the example. So Node Fetch, similar kind of thing with that. And there, um, installation instructions here explicitly straight off the bat tell us to go and install using npm, which is something that comes down as part of um, Node. Go ahead and install using Node Fetch. npm install Node Fetch rather. And then in our folder, we've got a whole bunch of things. We've got the folder that was missing when we were with all our dependencies in that wasn't we couldn't obviously see when we were doing things with pip. We've got a package a file, package.json, which gives like um, dependencies and what version they are currently pinned to, or not pinned to, what version they're kind of specified on. And we also have like a package lock, which is like all our dependencies and their dependencies of dependencies. So we can um, get a what's known as a deterministic build. So we can we can basically reproduce our build again very easily by just running pip in, uh, sorry, no npm install using those package JSON files. Um, and also we can share them with people on a team if they are, say, wanting to set up something on their system and this is, um, we can share those things really easily and make things easy there. Um, within that folder as well, we've also got that node modules directory. So if we want to remove anything, we can literally just go um, remove node modules and we've got rid of all the packages that were installed. We don't need to worry about going off and hunting for them. They've literally been uninstalled. Uh, and actually I can just run npm install and get them all back if I want. Which is very simple in comparison to the approach that we'd be having to do in um, with Python, where we have to remember a lot of this stuff. We have a number of different ways we can do things with Python, and unfortunately we have a, perhaps too many ways of doing things. There's so many different um, packaging tools now, it's very confusing to be able to choose between them. I've done a whole bunch of different videos on them, so go and check them out if you want to um, see some of the di differences between them. Um, but the default we're giving is uh, using pip. And I'm not sure that that is the correct uh, default for guiding noob developers anyway. Now, there are some packages which do things really well. And for instance, Flask has a really good um, set of instructions where it says to use a virtual environment for installing stuff. So. We say create a project and then create a new virtual environment within it. And this is using the standard kind of VN module that you can get um, in Python. And I'm going to call it dot VM. Okay, so we should now let's remove that requirement as well. So we've got VM. If we do source now, you can see we've got that VM enabled, and then if I do pip install minus I do request scan, we get a whole load of stuff. We still don't get like the requirements captured, so that's still something that we need to do manually, which is not ideal. But now we've got stuff captured into a, a VM um, folder that we can make use of. So there's another example there where I've just gone ahead and done uh, npm uninstall node fetch and actually it completely tidies up my system. It removes the node modules. It actually gets rid of the package lock and the package JSON because there's no longer any dependencies installed, um, which is what you'd expect. That's the behavior you'd expect. So we're kind of using these really old tools um, with uh, Python and um, 
perhaps badly guiding some new developers into using some tools as well. So yeah, I hope you've uh, enjoyed that little bit of a ramble and um, my thought process about how Python packaging tools are current or current state of them. Um, I'd definitely go and check out uh, some of the videos that I've already done on Python packaging tools. PDM is one that's really interesting, which allows you to um, make use of a system where you're not actually using virtual environments at all. Um, yeah, and if you enjoyed the video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you uh, like this sort of thing, then subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you in a future video. All right, bye for now.